gallery or period of time to have this exhibition here is stunning. It is, it is masterful. Drive by at night and look at this wall lit up because, but just make sure you pay attention to the road because we don't want any <laughs> to happen. So I am so grateful for everything the mayor has done, putting this together, getting the work here, and making it happen. So without further ado, please welcome you. With great timing, I had laryngitis and the flu this week, so quiet. Uh, um, yes, this, this has been a long time in the making, and um, I'm so pleased. But I, I, I really feel like things that take a long time always end up coming at the right time, so I'm, I'm very happy that it's, uh, uh, the show is up this summer and this time of year and with many friends here, so it's, it's wonderful. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about my, just, I'm trying to compress this, I'm actually giving a talk on Tuesday which where I'll show pictures and whatever, but I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about my parents and a little bit about the work that's here and how I came to curate it, um, this group of, of things. So first of all, somebody asked me, um, which one is which? So Ilya Shore was my father, and <laughs> Rezia Shore, or I called her Resha, was my mother. And um, most of the works that are free, all the works that are freestanding are by my father, and all the works that are on the wall are by my mother. And then there's one wall piece by my father. Um, my parents were both Polish artists. Um, they met in art school in Warsaw in 1930. And there's a picture in, I made a little vitrine of sort of small objects, and you'll see a picture of my father actually before art school when he was an apprentice to a goldsmith when he's about 16. Um, you'll see a picture of my ravishingly beautiful, mystically beautiful mother um, when she was 18. And, um, sorry, the hat again has some of the clemptitude in here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, um, they happened to have the good fortune to be in Paris uh, in 1938 and 1939. Uh, that was the beginning of the many things that led to them surviving the Holocaust. Um, they fled to Marseille, they came to America, they arrived uh, a couple of days before Pearl Harbor. Um, and they settled in New York. They spent one summer in New York City, and then they were poor as much or twice, but they figured, we are never spending a summer in New York again. Um, and so they began to share homes, houses, rentals on Long Island, and then they went to Rockport, and they went to Woodstock. And in 1957, our family came to Provincetown for the first time. We had a lot of friends here. Um, the Torkovs, the Hein Gross and his wife Rainey, and their daughter Mimi, and, uh, and friends in Wellfleet who were architects who taught at Harvard and musicians. And this was the place. It, it was the place uh, that we really bonded with. Um, and I arrived when I was seven years old, and there's a letter of my mother uh, to my sister, who was not with us right at that particular moment, she was at camp, saying, Mira feels very good here. And it's true, I bonded to this place. Um, the, there's a work here, um, right at the edge, called Angel. And in the catalog, you'll see that there's a picture of it taken against the bay in Provincetown. So I know that this work was done here in Provincetown. Um, and, um, so the story goes as follows. Uh, my father and mother both were trained as painters, but my father had been trained earlier as a jeweler and graver. And um, my father died in, in 1961, so a very long time ago. And my mother was a 50-year-old widow with two small children. And she decided uh, that and she was a painter. And she decided that she could not make a living as a painter, and she first picked up his tools. He made jewelry, Judaica. I hope you'll look at the catalog, you'll see a little bit more about them. Um, and she began to work, and she really found herself in many way as an artist. Um, my, she lived a very long life. She died uh, in 2006, just before her 96th birthday. 
and she worked until uh, very late, and I'll talk a little, just a little bit about that too. Um, I, when, when she died, I, I thought, well, I'd love to do a show um, of their work. I'd love to do a show at the Art Association because Provincetown is a place we love. My mother bought a house here when she began to sort of have set herself up independently in 1970. And um, so the puzzle was what to do. And I realized that my, there was work that would have been very complicated to curate. It would have required a lot of research. Um, works that are all over the world, and also works that are immensely valuable because they're Judaica, they're jewelry, the, they just would have been very, very uh, difficult to put together. Meanwhile, I'm looking around my apartment, uh, my mother's apartment, which I now live in, and right smack in front of my face are all these works that have lived, some of them, together uh, and have grown together. So. Um, for example, uh, I'll just to sort of make you think about the show a little differently, there's, there's a piece uh, over there, a the tallest piece my father is called Warrior. And there's an, another piece at the end of this wall, and they live next to each other in the apartment. And I began to think about how my mother, who you can see in a picture taken in the apartment in 1969 in that vitrine, sitting surrounded by my father's sculptures, the works that are in this, in this show. And um, after she began to make jewelry, and then she began to make these works, which in a way are sculptures. They're also sculptural paintings. There are many different ways one can think about them. And I really think she was responding and talking to their work. She, my mother never remarried. She loved my father very much. And she admired him. And I think that this work is the continuation of a conversation in a sense that they have for the rest of her life. The marriage never ended, in a sense, for her. And um, I think it's been, it's been very interesting for me to, uh, to curate this also because I was very familiar with my father's pieces and I was very familiar with my mother's work, but in fact, what you're seeing of my mother's work has never been shown. And not only has it never been shown, it, with a couple of exceptions, I should say, but a lot of these large pieces, they never were in our house. She did them and she put them away. And so I had the incredible experience of like, well, what's, it, my, I call my house like the cave of Alibaba because it's just filled with treasures. <laughs> I stick my hand in the closet, I come out with some incredible thing. And in this case, I would just like, you know, there would be these lumps wrapped in like the Maltese Falcon, you know, in the newspaper. And open it up and there's this piece, uh, the one right there with the black sun. And on the back of it is a poem by Shehab and Nawaz, from which I took the title of the piece. Um, I don't remember it by heart, but if you read the catalog, it's an amazing piece about being left with a broken heart and, uh, and continuing, except from my point of view. Um, she continued. She was not uh, broken by, by her widowhood. And, um, and also, I was just struck, and I think seeing this work, seeing my mother's work up by uh, her incredible visual intelligence. A kind of, she was not a, English was her fifth language, I think. So she was very pithy and could really say truths, but she was not an, a, a, a deep intellectual in the way that she talked about her. She wasn't a theoretician of art. She knew about art incredibly well. Um, it's just that she didn't have the language you know, for it, but she had the intelligence and the eye. My father's work, is, I think, I, I hope you'll look at it to see how a modernist sculpture would be crafted like a medieval jewel, because he never lost his relation to the tools that, and, the, and the ways that he had originally uh, learned how to make uh, art. Um, there, I just want to think of a couple things. Oh, so the other thing that you'll really, that I noticed when I was when we were installing the show is that there's several works in the show of my father's called either Lover or The Lovers. There are at least two works, there's three works in the show of my mother's that refer to the bee not the, the stealth bomber and to the locker bee crash. And I I started thinking my father was a lover you know, and a poet. 
and in a way a very delicate person, in some way a very feminine person. And my mother was a warrior, and, and, she, and she had the opportunity to, to express it in her work, and I just wish she would have been able to see this, because I mm. think she would be surprised herself at, mm. at what the work looks like. And the other thing, the last thing I'd like to say, um, is that it's, it's, it's very heartening to keep in mind that many of the works in the show were done when my mother was 80 years old, or seven, in her 70s and 80s. The works that are in the show begin in her 60s, and a lot, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think the last work that's in here is around 80. And uh, I think that in an, in an age where, which is very youth-oriented, <laughs> I don't think you would think of these as works by an older person, this joyful, you know, effulgent work. Um, and, uh, and I think that that's incredibly encouraging for, for me. <laughs> Age-wise, I'm at the beginning of that span of time. And, uh, and anyway, so I, I really hope you, you look at the details and at the work, and I, I hope you'll look at the catalog, which I, I'm so proud of. And, um, the, the Art Association and Chris and everyone was so helpful and Chris Wilcox did a beautiful job and I want to end by thanking again Bob Bailey. When I thought about the show, it immediately came with that Bob was going to install it because he's just a genius of, of, he just has some sort of sense of what goes together. I never ever could have thought of how these works would be hung so that it wouldn't be just work, 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 or you know how to how to get the idea of the marriage together, but have each one be featured. And I gave him some guidance as to what things I think you know belong together. But then he, he just pulled it together, and it, it I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you come on Tuesday because she has a lot more than this, okay? And it's all good. Now, if you wouldn't mind moving into the back Duffy Gallery, we're going to hear from